And Are You Okay is a not safe for work podcast, so any young listeners are discouraged from continuing. However, we literally have no way to track that. So do whatever the hell you want and enjoy the show. going to be the first full-fledged argument on any are you okay look who knows <laughs> who knows i feel like i feel like i make there's so many conflicting principles <laughs> <laughs> the phrase don't make no sense what can fruity compare <laughs> <laughs> like logically you don't believe in your side <laughs> <laughs> there's there oh, no. evidence mike <laughs> This is gonna be yeah no I'm a uh, I will say this is this may be the only episode that I've watched like back to back because I typically don't watch these twice or if I do it's kind of like I just have it on the second time like sometimes I like play yeah. it and then just have it on the second time or if like. If we're like a week between recordings, I might do a little quick refresher. This is the first episode that I've ever watched like the same time in the same day. And my opinion did not change on it the second time. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Come right in. Sit right down. Sit Matt right is going to tell you. He's going to tell you if that's no moon. He's going to tell you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't sing the song last episode. <laughs> It's a death star. <laughs> it's a death star. <laughs> it's, it's Project Stardust. It's Project Stardust. Bro. Yeah, it, it sure is. Um, I am your host, Mikey, uh, the human holocron himself. Darth Plagueis the Wise as my host. Darth Plagueis host. the Wise. I, I love when you do that. I and I'm, I'm joined with <laughs> <laughs> I'm joined with the rogue one, the rogue only Broby one Kenobi, the mace wind dude, the smack talker Skywalker himself, Matthew Porter are you checked in? Your main main of the gray hoodie gang fresh off my 9 to 5 about to hit hyperdrive I am checked in brother, I am because I have I knew you would be. feelings and opinions <laughs> Let's see if we can navigate that together. Uh, so I'm going to drop a spoiler warning here because you are listening to the finale, series finale coverage of our Bad Batch thoughts. Um, Matt and I, you know, we watched the finale today and we just absolutely felt that it was important to get our initial reaction uh, recorded. Uh, we have both watched it twice, as you may have heard in, in our intro here. You know, I always cut this shit in when we're mid conversation. So I'm sure I'll leave that part <laughs> as we navigate these waters together. Um Matt, before I dive into kind of like how we're going to structure this episode, I just do do want to hit it off at the top that I I have really enjoyed this series so far, and uh, I'm interested. I'm I know you. This is your idea, so we'll probably um, come back to this after a lot of the May Fourth Star Wars content dump. But we are planning on revisiting uh, the Bad Batch as a whole, so. I think a lot of today is going to be some reflection on how it led up to this point, but we are going to be focusing mainly on the episode itself. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to do so. Uh, are you ready to hyper dive into this bad boy? I'm punchy, Chewy. <laughs> Uh, the climactic finale is here with the batch scattered across Mount Tantus. We watch our heroes struggle and triumph in the heart of enemy territory. We will discuss our favorite story beats, the best interactions of each main character, and our overall thoughts around the entire series finale and some uh, behind the green curtain for you guys. I have taken notes on each character. Matt has a slew of notes that I'm sure he is ready to dive into, but I think he's going to react to me and then I'm probably going to react to him. So this should be a, a fun one, maybe a long one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be something. <laughs> uh, all right. So the first character I have up is, is Hunter. Um, 
And keep in mind, this is, I'm sure we will talk about the episode in its entirety because it goes across many things. But my name is Hunter. Wanna, is, uh, do you want to do that first? Like, just uh, before we get into like hunt uh, characters and their beats, like just your overall thoughts on it in general? Just, I like, was. Let, let me. Let's try and give ourselves a little bit of a challenge here in three okay. sentences or less. Let's do our initial thoughts. Alrighty. Three sentences um, or less. <laughs> I was prepared for heartbreak. Have three words. And thought, <laughs> mm, and thought we were going to get heartbreak. I was a little shocked and surprised that we got the happy ending. There are parts of me that love it and parts of me that are not so fond of it because I think that they could have done something that would have been just as strong as season two's finale. Um, that being said, there's still a lot of positives from my side in terms of like where the characters ended up and how we got to their conclusion. Um, I will say there, it feels like there were a lot of things that were unanswered. Go ahead, Matt. That was Give more me your than three, three words. Sentences. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I tried to, get, there's some commas in there. I think <laughs> maybe a semicolon. <laughs> run on, run on sentences. <laughs> All right. So, Hold on. Yes, dear. No, didn't call your name. <laughs> so I have. Yeah, I have six words, but I'm going to just give you three because I want to build the suspense. <laughs> so, OK, the three words that I would use to sum up this series finale. What is technically was fine. <laughs> technically was fine. I see what you did there. Technically was fine. Yeah. Technically was fine. All right. We'll, 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 I'll dive into my. We can elaborate. Yeah, on we'll that elaborate as we, as we go. I'm excited to hear the <laughs> other three words. <laughs> because uh, because how I did it, I didn't do it by character because I kind of already started taking notes before you had said that. So I just kind of reviewed. All my notes are just like as a whole for like the whole episode mm-hmm. so i guess what i'll do is as we talk about characters i guess i can address issues that i have with parts that they were involved in or is- pros and or cons that i had with we'll figure it out, <laughs> we'll figure it out. and you know what? maybe i think uh, along the way maybe there will be some things where maybe you make me not like something that i thought i liked and maybe i'll have the opposite reaction for you so we'll see here uh starting off with hunter um I think it, his story really came full circle in this episode. It was nice to see the showrunners bring the strong relationship between Hunter and Omega back in a quiet way, I think, in the epilogue. But when it came to his brothers, the heartfelt concern and care came in the form of like the badass action, I think, that we are used to from the Bad Batch. Uh, making that victory on Mount Tantus, I think, all the sweeter. Uh, I think Hunter was handled really well in this episode. And, and while some of the criticisms, I think, coming from us throughout the season of just feeling like he's an afterthought... Um, it felt like his role to play in this episode felt much more pivotal, pivotal. And uh, from like a, a bookend aspect, uh, it did feel like they kind of came full circle with him, which was, I think, gratifying for me on his character arc. How did you feel? Yeah. So fun- funnily enough, I actually did put a note that does uh, pertain to kind of almost exactly what you just said. So my favorite part of the episode in its entirety one of I won't say one of yeah fuck it I'll say it one of the only things that I took is like oh that was amazing because like I said technically it was mm-hmm. fine one of the one of the only things that I absolutely loved about it was the bridge scene with Crosshair Great Hunter, scene. um yeah Hemlock not Rampart <laughs> and Omega <laughs> that was my favorite <laughs> thing of the whole episode and funny funnily how you brought up the thing about hunter being nerfed i i i loved how omega ran to give crosshair the hug first and in that moment i was like damn they really did just nerf the shit out of hunter for this whole season but then in a really quick moment before that scene cuts out she grabs hunter's arm as they're walking away and i I really felt like, oh, that was an amazing point of balance that like, hey, she her and Crosshair had like a bonding experience, like they're on Tantus where they got close. She sees that he lost the hand. He needed that hug more than Hunter did in that moment. Yeah. 
But uh, and then she pulls him in too. Like it was like a family hug. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but at, but as they're walking away together, that familiarity, she still grabs Hunter by the arm because you know that's who that's that's her dad for her, her dad brother for yeah. all intents and purposes. So in that moment, I I did feel like it was some a bit of justification for Hunter. And then obviously in the epilogue, he's the one that uh, lets Omega go off. I will say my first watch, I didn't like that crosshair and wrecker weren't there for that but during my second watch uh a part of my gripe a part of my technically was fine in all of this i feel like they i'm trying to save my rant for the end <laughs> right? but, uh, all right all right so I'll, I'll say this a little a little sneak preview of my rant that feeds to why i'm okay with just hunter being there the second watch through my biggest overarching problem with this finale pre going on my rant is I feel like it was the most Star Warsy this show has ever been slash kid friendly I feel like okay. the Bad Batch I feel like the Bad Batch for season 1 and 2 was like yeah it's an animated show so kids are gonna watch it but it was catered towards us who liked the clone Wars show or us who like yeah. like the 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 og star wars fans like it was a show for us but like oh yeah like kids will watch it too i feel like with all the choices that they made which goes back to my technically was fine they played it to like a Skywalker saga standard, which I think the thing that we loved about this show the most was that it subverted all those Lucasfilm tropes. Like, yeah, and it, it just felt like they leaned way too much into not even fan service, just like, oh, hey, this is a Disney show. Bad guys prevail. Everybody wins. Hugs and love. No conflict. Like, and I feel like Bad Batch has always been like, oh, shit hits the fan in this show. Things don't go the way that we're expecting they're going to go there. Things do not go their way all the time. They got to fight for that slice of happiness. And it just feels like it kind of was just given in the way that a, a kid show would give like oh yeah of course ash is going to become a pokemon master like of course the digi destins are going to defeat Pi Pi years i know <laughs> i know so all right so right i know that so as i was saying the ash example i was like yeah it's going on. so of course the digi destins are going to defeat the you know the digimon emperor <laughs> like like yeah of yeah. course like you know of course the blade breakers are going to win every tournament in every season <laughs> like so it just kind it just kind of felt like that but in that light of oh low hanging fruit, that's that was the other three worded <laughs> word that I wanted to use. Low hanging fruit. I was okay with Omega with Omega and Hunter being there because it was it was a sense of um I'm trying to think of the word normalcy, which I feel like that was kind of what they were going for. Like they wanted the bats to just have like a normal life. Like they wanted them to like yeah. like we 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 made so many references uh to um. Avengers with like, hey, go get a slice of that life that you've been looking for. Yeah, that you've yeah. always been talking about. And I feel like that is what they did. They did give the batch a sense of normalcy. So that was just like another day. It just happened to be Omega going off to become a rebellion pilot. So like, it's okay that Jess Hunter was there because like, I imagine that you know she pro on the way to their home, she probably passed Crosshair and the Record. They probably knew that she wanted to go off and become a pilot. I didn't. The, my second watch, I was like, oh, this was just like her saying goodbye in a normal way. She probably was with all of them earlier that day. <laughs> like, like who yeah, knows? Yeah. Like, type of situation. I did, but my original watch, and I was like, why the fuck would they rob Wrecker and Crosshair that goodbye? But I'm like, oh, yeah, this is years later. They've all lived together all this time. Crosshair and Wrecker are probably just doing something in town. She probably had her right. moment with she's, them, and she's making point. the choice. And you know, she to just fight came to get her, her ship, and Wrecker just—I mean, Hunter just happened to be the only person that was there. So, I did like that for him. And in the looking at it through the lens of just like, oh, everything, everything that you think would happen in old Star Wars storytelling is what happened, and it—that's what I don't like. So that's why I'm like, technically. It was fine. <laughs> like, like, you know, like the batch got the slice of their normalcy. Omega gets to go off and become a rebellion pilot. 
things of that nature. You know, Tansis doesn't blow up. It gets shut down by the Empire. I know I'm getting ahead of myself. So, oh, wait, how, I got blipped. Where'd you lose me at? Oh, no, I mean, I... Back. I got your point. I knew where you were what you were getting across, um, and I, I do feel that like the ultimate, <laughs> um, like that ending for her made sense, and the slice of life thing definitely feels. I think here's here's a weird thing, and, I, and maybe it's going to make more sense when we talk through some of the other characters. But I think that ultimately, for the clones and it being a clone centric story, you have this real life parallel to um, like so actual soldiers like a lot of people who served in the military I think gravitate towards the show like this and um, I think there's like a larger message here about like trying to um, show that like you know even though you've been to battle and been at war like you can still find peace and happiness afterwards that being said I think that message would have landed a lot harder had we seen the Bad Batch fight through the Clone Wars and not just kind of live this like ragtag mercenary life. Um, and the one character I think that like that message does land for is Echo. Um, and maybe that's why they focus on him so much in these last couple episodes, having been, you know, not around. It just feels like I like a lot of the choices they made, but they didn't exactly stick the landing as strong as they could have in terms of like the story they were trying to tell. Um, uh, we'll get to echo. I do have do like you, a lot of, a lot of notes on him, but go ahead. I was just going to say, do you at all feel like they might have changed the ending? Was the, did, did I this do. season start before the writer strike? Like what was it like? It was finished before the writer strike they were animating it during the writer strike oh okay so so i'm glad that you uh said that too because it again everything that this show has been about and everything that filoni has done even here or with book of boba fett mandalorian and everything the mandoverse and all that why me and you specifically have loved these things is because they've gone against the Skywalker saga tropes. Like they've like done different shit, especially with Andor. I know that's like a different property, but like the yeah. the most the most recent chain of Star Wars storytelling has been like, hey, we know that good always prevails and is very cookie cutter and predictable. We want to turn this shit on its head. And I feel like that's what the Bad Batch and Andor have done the best of all these shows that we've gotten, you know, with the with the new Disney since the Disney uh, acquisition and whatnot. And I feel like this ending, uh, not to beat the dead horse, like you said, I'm not I'm not mad at the choices. Well, I, I, I'm I am mad at the choices because I feel like they went the safe route, like they played it safe. Like, I feel like yeah and I do think that some season, of that may be a reaction to Tech's death may have may have like skewed the way that they wrote the fate of the yeah. other characters like, and, like um, even with that let me let me let me jump to Tech real quick since he wasn't in this so we've been saying and I still stand on my stance that I wanted him to be dead like make it make it mean yeah. something but but if Tech was going to be dead, which he was, which I'm happy that they left him dead, why play around with that clone X shit? Like, you can't tell me that that was not intentional. Like, with the the keep showing the goggles in the episode that the clone X guy invaded the island and stuff like that. Like, like kind of very similar with like the smoke shit with the Soka. Or even uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Buchanan guy in the Hawkeye series. Like, why do you put shit next to each other that fits if you're not going to do anything with it? Like, that kind of annoyed me. Again, jumping ahead a bit. Yeah, it's like I a uh, red herring. Hate. Or what's the opposite? Yeah. What are they like? It's, a, it's no, almost it, like they yeah, like. I, I guess it is. Yeah. It's they're like, trying it's, to throw no, you no, off yeah, the scent of what's actually happening. Yeah. But by doing that, it's like I feel like by doing that. It's like, had you just... All right, hold on. Let me think of what I'm trying to say. Why do a red herring if the end result is nothing? 
Like there wasn't anything about tech in this season finale other than the fact I that Omega to, keeps his goggles. And you're going to probably hate me for saying this, but to subvert right. expectations. But the expectations it's to do what we constantly ask they, them for. But look, yeah, but look, they planted look, the seed to out. draw you off the scent. <laughs> But hear, but hear me out, hear me out. They didn't subvert my expectations. They set a expectations by teasing it being a thing just for the clone X-Force to be nobodies. And I even said jokingly last week, hey, what if we got my smoked again? And we fucking yeah. got my smoked again. We did. But also, <laughs> I think look- you... I'm going to challenge you a little bit. Go ahead. You Go ahead. bought into it. They've sh- They showed us two clone x operatives that were not tech with the same armor and everything same helmet in season two see the guy he bites the electric cyanide pill and then we have them capture the other one and they kill him too regular clone Mm -hmm. so i hear you and there's like there's the element of crosshair and him fighting in that one episode that maybe from the writer's standpoint was like this will lend itself to crosshair story yeah, a lot of people attach themselves to it being tech because of some of the similar body type and other things. And then when and here's my other point, the and because they were very Knights of Ren, in my opinion, these guys show up at Bro, the end to fight thousands. for like no reason, even though they're cool as shit and had awesome designs. But they did kind of mirror the batch. There was the big bulky guy who like challenged Wrecker, the dude with the swords. I don't know who that was supposed to be. He was just really cool. Um and then there was the, I guess, Clone X was meant to be Crosshair's double as the sniper, the one that mm-hmm. we had seen. And then there was the other guys who I think were meant to be Hunter and, and Echo. Um, so or funnily enough, so you, you mentioned one of my notes here. Uh, so I want to I want to challenge your challenge a bit going back okay. to <laughs> why do it to do nothing. So. I'll give you the tech thing. There have been other Clone Force X operatives that weren't tech before. So I'll give you that one. Here goes back to my why do it to then do nothing with it. In this episode alone, they made it a point to intentionally obscure who Clone X's faces were for them to <laughs> not be revealed. What is well, what the one is gets the his helmet knocked off in doing but <laughs> what they but yeah. they do it they did, they did it twice. They did it twice. They have the Darth Vader helmet drop on the bald one. Doesn't matter who it was, so then why do that tease? And then in the final moments of the one with the swords, they even have him pick up his helmet, but like blur out, you don't really get a full visual of what his face is, and then he puts the helmet back on and then dies two seconds later. Why do like, ooh, identity's important type things for them not to be important, especially, you ready for this, in a fucking animated show. So it's not like a live action and, oh, that's just what the camera picked up. Like, no, someone animated the intention to not give these people faces to give you the, oh, identity's going to be a big deal for them to be nobody. (laughs) <laughs> so it's just like <laughs> why tease that to do nothing with it and, and I want to I'll parallel that with in this kind of can go to uh, predictions on if you what you think might happen next or where we might see these characters again why the fuck do you make Omega force sensitive to do nothing with it and again I didn't want her to be force sensitive so technically it's fine I'm okay with them not giving her the Sabine treatment but like Mm -hmm. that was literally just a plot device to bring back a size ventures Omega being force sensitive has nothing to do with nothing I totally disagree with that I completely disagree with that her blood was meant to be the catalyst for Project Necromancer as an example of somebody whose blood could produce the replication of an M count because they couldn't right. do that with anybody else. I know. No, so I get that part, but I'm saying like having the midi chlorians or a high M count. You bet. Yeah. No, you're good. I'll be back. Right. I'm cutting out. Oh, I was saying, Let's be real. So, it's not you. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, so, so Mikey, so I'm, I'm fine with the whole M count thing. Cool with that. She has high midi chlorine just in there. I'm fine with that. I was totally fine with her. You know, some beings just are more like we said, the blind, like we talk about all the time, the blind guy from uh, Rogue One. And I'm sure he probably had a high midi chlorine count, but he wasn't like 
in touch with the force. I'm saying the whole the whole thing about Asajj saying like basically them teeing up that like oh if she wants this type of training she's gonna have to leave you guys like why even play around with that to then do a time skip where she's gonna go and be a resistance pilot like it's like that the whole point of her the whole point of them teasing that she might try to tap into that that was unnecessary if you're not gonna do anything with it I'm so to what if they do something with it that's so so that's why I was saying yeah uh, yeah so that's what I was saying. It depends on where you think these people might show up again if they do. But like, but if Omega never pops up again, that was stupid. <laughs> like, why, why even go down that road of people being like, ah, oh, another Force user, and then they yeah, don't? We would do be really naive, her. really naive to not think that she will pop up again. She will a hundred percent pop up again. It's it's well, where, where would where would that be? Where where would that be at? Because well, Omega, they're gonna prop. I'm. Th- I'm thinking that whatever animated show comes next that like involves her is going to take place probably during the original trilogy, which is technically uncharted territory for animation. Nothing has happened during the events of the original trilogy. I'm kind of like, listen, me personally, I have had enough original trilogy stories, but and that's my a lot of people like that's my like that era. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my concern is that and and I do want to go through like the character breakdown. So I'm sorry I'm t- kind of taking us off the rails a no, bit right. <laughs> with my with with my grievances. I have that same concern that it's for me all these Filoni projects have felt like all right, we're closing the gap to the sequel trilogy and then the Mandoverse is going to be like the bookend. It's just how I've assumed. I haven't really put in my head canon that they might do more things in these in this flashback era. We'll call it because, like, I yeah. feel like, like you just said, they've done is is getting is getting a bit much. Like we've cl- we've closed a lot of the the gaps. I, I will say, I love the fact that Nala say blew up all the data on how to clone. Oh yeah, I love that. Oh yeah, I love. I love how that's an explanation as to why cloning isn't a thing anymore in the this mm-hmm. the original trilogy and even the sequel trilogy and why Palpatine had to go through so much shit because only they handled that perfectly. Yeah, yeah, that was wonderful. Loved all that. So with that headspace that they're like, because and, and also like on a like on a on a an internal um, level, the the act of cloning has been such a a strong through line through so much of Star Wars pre yeah. like every post dating the actual Clone Wars movies that felt like the end of an era like even more than the Clone it Wars did. TV show that felt yeah. like oh shit this is the death of cloning like this is where cloning died at and it was just like that was a powerful moment to me but because of that like you just said I'm not necessarily I'm not necessarily sure and di- again, Disney's gonna fucking Disney, and they're gonna pump money into shit and take our bread and subscription dollars. I don't know how much I care. I care about Omega's story. I don't care about the timeline in which her story would be told again next. Like I don't care about the the early days of the rebellion because I've seen that shit. Like, right? A no, no, times. that's it's it's. it's totally fair and there's like they call this era between three and four the rise of the empire um and there's a lot of time frame and a lot of cool stories that can be told i mean hell we're seeing it right but like with rebels and andor and we still have another season of andor left you're right we have played in that time frame a lot but technically like having an animated show run during the original trilogy is kind of like a cool in concept but it always will beg the question and this is how it's going to be with star wars period because the movies are always going to supersede everything for us so right. if you put something in that timeline you're going to be like well why weren't they fucking there during the events of return of the jedi or the empire strikes back and it's convenient they're off screen right and it's like that's annoying to some people to me i just think it it's more world building and that's why I think I can live with it. 
But at the same time, I, I will say I'm, I'm a little bit tired of the original trilogy Empire being the villain type thing. I think that's why I'm very excited for the Acolyte. Um, but yeah, I, I hear you. And I, I don't think you're it's a valid complaint. Like you can feel that way. I don't want you to feel like you're like you can. Oh, no, I think no, your sure. criticism, your criticism is coming from a place of just like we have seen this before. Or you're looking for new and unique stories. You're not poo pooing on the stories we've already gotten. And I think that that's like a constructive the, you, way to come at it. You, you know, you know what, it, you know, because you because you know what it is, is like good storytelling has been the staple of this show. And then it feels like yeah. for me, they went to safe storytelling for the series finale. And like me, and you have been saying we said last week, like they haven't even though it was in like the tagline on Disney Plus now, like it feels like they got so far away from this being like a big event like this is the end of the bad batch and i do feel like this is the end of the bad batch like we might see them in cameo appearances other places maybe Mm -hmm. but i will i will say to comment on what you just said about some people might be disappointed as to like oh well where were they during this i actually am okay with the reason the batch might not have been around during uh the big things of the original trilogy was just that they're just old and retired i'm totally yeah. fine with that that's like fine. that's yeah yeah like for for they, them they specifically yeah and not only that i i loved it, it's all it, it legit is all them last two sentences did it for me because like had hunter not said at the first ending before the epilogue like we fought enough wars. I'm done. Like we're done. Like we 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 did yeah. our part. We're done. That line, and then Omega saying in the epilogue, like you guys have done enough. This is my fight now. Like chill out. Like yeah. them, I do them love just being. Yeah, them just being done. I'm totally fine with them just living on an island in retirement. <laughs> like yeah, like that's okay for me. So I won't. Uh, I won't gripe on that. But with Omega. If she doesn't pop up again, which I'm, I'm confident she will pop up again in some some way, shape or form like her just her just being a resistance pilot fighter doesn't sit well with me for, for no, that she'll, to that's be, the thing. Like, I think her that to she'll just be like a spoke. <laughs> <laughs> she'll she'll do her journey with the force. Yeah, for her just to be a spoke be a in the wheel bothers me. Yeah, I don't think she's so, going to be a spoke in the wheel. I don't I'm I'm I don't, Yeah. All right, cool, cool, yeah, because like, because again, like she's she's a heavy hitter, especially um, if we if we again to go back to Necromancer, oh, that's all right. Let me like, my, can I can I just rant one thing, one more thing, real quick? And then we'll get yeah, into man, go this for it. The way you want to do it <laughs> for for me for me going through the the second watching, I don't like how they handled project necromancer in this episode because them purposefully cutting away when nala say tells not hemlock what project necromancer (laughs) is i hated that because for me it made me feel like they're saving all the meat and potatoes of necromancer for the mandalorian stuff like for the movie and everything and i'm like that was a major through line for this whole season and you used it as an alley-oop to then be able to give it to the mando stuff because if i'm going off of how they framed it nala say sacrifices herself blows up all the research project necromancer gets shut down all that research goes to stardust which we know is to build the death star but we do know that secret uh in the sewer organization of the empire that's going to grow into what i would imagine to be the first order uh with the moth they pretty much kind of reopen project necromancer and we know that grogu's a big part of it assuming he's taking the place of what omega would have been but it's just like necromancer was such a big plot point in this whole movie and you chose to not give us like oh what it actually is even though again all the pieces are there it's such a cheap ripe in my opinion that is like a such a weak point 
Think think about it. Like the people who have seen the sequel trilogy know what the fucking end result of Project Necromancer is. So I'm gonna shut you down. I'm right aware now. of that. That is a that's a weak <laughs> ass point though. It's like you you want what if someone's watching this shit in chronological order and they get to fucking build up through the Project Necromancer stuff through all this stuff and then realize at the very end, oh, it was Palpatine. <laughs> no one's doing that. No. But. So so let, let me let me let me let me for clarification. I'm not saying that. Oh, they didn't make it clear that that's how uh, Snoke becomes a thing. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is we've never we've gotten just mad pieces of what Necromancer was. And it's like, oh, we just put it together. There's never been like, oh, somebody got the files and like read what Necromancer was and why Omega was so important and why they needed Grogu and stuff and like how that relates to Snow. I know there's still that missing piece. Like how did they end up perfecting Necromancer, which I'm sure we'll get that answer. But it seemed like, again, the choice if we all know and we know what the end result is, why not show that conversation? I guess what I'm trying to say, like why purposefully have not him like go around it and now let's say, well, yeah, why they- I think that that's like adding mystery and intrigue to continue like the story. Maybe some, maybe Bad Batch is someone's first Star Wars, right? And they're like, "Well, what happened?" Well, you got to keep fucking watching. You know what I mean? Like, like that is. I think that's part of it. Where it's just you're not like explaining all of it. It's just kind of like Project Stardust. Project Stardust. What if someone is like actually watching? But you they've know. answered that. We know what Stardust was. That was just no, a call we, that. right? But we also know what Necromancer is. We know that it's the end result is for Palpatine to clone himself. And we they also blatantly say that Omega's like why her blood is important is because it can bond with midi chlorians where others can't. So, gotcha. like, I think the answers are the answers are there. I think if some but like the reason I think they're dancing around it is so that the viewer can piece it together as they go through. But it's like it's it's the same thing as mentioning Project Stardust every three fucking seconds. Because we know what Stardust is. Well, we know what Necromancer is too. I think like the nuances was, of it. It's like it's, I'm oh, go ahead. It's the delay. I'm just saying. Like <laughs> I know. Sorry. Uh, it's it's my shitty internet. Um, but it's like never. we've never seen like we've seen the Death Star get constructed, um, like slightly. But we didn't know. And like the thermal exhaust port. Like no one knew what that shit was until you watch Rogue One. So yeah, maybe they are saving it for. Um, like something in the Mandalorian and they didn't want to go over it there, but it's like it uh, to me. I think that's like a, if that's going to be a major reason why you didn't like the episode, I don't think that it holds a lot of merit because I think star Wars does this a lot. If I'm being completely honest, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a major reason, but it's like necromancer was a major plot point of the show, like of this season. And it feels like by them skirting around it, it's it seemed like for me, it made it feel like they're trying to use the Bad Batch to big up other shit when I loved the Bad Batch. Like it didn't feel like they were giving it its send off. Like it felt like, oh, let's use this last episode to tease other shit instead of respecting this show for how great it's been for the past five years. That's that's my gripe. It's just like, okay. this, yeah, you feel like it was show, a it was a vehicle for something that was. Big. Yeah, they're trying to use it to promote other upcoming things, which, again, TV and business is going to business. But it's just like put some respect on this show, bro. Like this has yeah. been a great show. Let it let let this show like you just said, if we we all know what Necromancer is, why do the tease when we know the end result? And that's just been one piece of the conversation that hasn't been talked about like oh like how what was the plan like we know what omega's blood is used for uh we kind of got an idea we don't know how them smoke them snoke bodies were made we just know there's a vat right. of them on exegol like thing like things like that <laughs> it's just like if you're gonna tease if you're gonna use this show to tease other shit why would you kind of like sully the series finale to promote other shit like let this show go out well, on its they merits. also like, at the end of season one they teased tantus period so i think this was always the plan like they always knew that omega was going to be some part of project necromancer um 
And then on top of that, like, you know, we learned more about it at towards the end of like season two. And then we learned a lot about it this season at the beginning. Right. But not but not like the full like ramifications, like maybe all the maybe this was just one of the pieces of the puzzle. And it's also like it is propelling that story point forward. But isn't that kind of like one of the strengths of the show is being able to look back on it and be like, wow, like the Bad Batch was a fantastic show about this family. And it also pushed forward a like big plot point in the universe of itself. It's kind of like saying, look, we, we were just praising the show like last week or two weeks ago for its connective tissue, the same way like the MCU develops like some of these things, you know, earlier in the timeline and then they end up becoming these things. And I get it. Some of it's like fan generated and other some of it is actually some really like good and compelling writing, but it also like playing in this time frame allows them and having the shared universe being so far down the line, right? Like there's a lot of events that have happened in the future of this. Mm. They can make quote unquote callbacks or conveniently like write stuff to give some of the things that are happening in the bad batch more meaning. So I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to it. I could see how you feel like maybe like cheapened a bit. You want to know more about it. I think this is just coming from a place of you wanting to like know the nitty gritty details not, of project. So Necromancer. It's, it's, yo, and you know, it's, it's not, it's not even that it's kind of the, the, the end part of what you just said. Like, yeah, they can use callbacks to then make the show mean more, but the show's, over why not make it mean more while it was here I, i'll give you i'll give you an example and you got you got walk with me it's a crazy play, parallel okay you've seen split right yes amazing movie i love that movie split was very good james mcavoy bodied that the only thing that people talk about about that movie is the last is the five end. seconds yeah. when Bruce Willis shows up. They literally used an entire movie just to tee up the Unbreakable sequel. And it's just like, no, this movie was fucking amazing. James McAvoy played 24 different characters, did that shit crazily, bodied it. But the only thing that we talk about in that movie is the last five seconds when David Dunn shows up and it's like, oh shit, it's the sequel and to who's Unbreakable. who's to blame for that, Matt? M. Night Shyamalan, <laughs> the worst director look, in this I fucking look. planet. He fucking sucks and he ruins all of his movies by making the endings absolute dog shit. <laughs> That's my One, he, he, he He has some good ones. <laughs> uh, yeah, he sure he does. Ones. Six Sense, yeah, well, amazing. Calm. Unbreakable, amazing. I Six like the villain. Do anything for me because I got it ruined for me before I got to see oh, the, the whole thing. Damn. And then, but, uh, I'm sorry. Are we just gonna forget that the last Airbender exists? I, yes, that's exactly what I do. <laughs> 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 but I just, I that's how I felt. Just, I mean, I'm, I'm just using Necromancer as the example. But it felt like they took a show to promote other shows but it's a show that i liked a lot like i like i really yeah. enjoyed it and i feel like i feel like it just deserved its own like farewell like a big huzzah like the like yeah the but end. like i guess at the same time and and maybe it's just like a difference of opinion here we can agree to disagree it's not that big a deal but like every star wars show is like an advertisement for another star wars show no you're you're absolutely right and that's why i said like technically it's in line it's fine and yeah it, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but you know but you know what it is, and it kind of just goes back to that one point. The technically is fine because the show has spoiled us by doing things differently this whole time. So then to come yeah. back and do what Star Wars always has done was disappointing. That yeah. I guess that's well, and I, like I will say opinion. this because, and I'll get into it in some of my other notes. Um, but it's weird for me to, and this happens to me a lot. I feel like. The ending of season one, tragic, filled with loss, were kind of like, okay, Camino is gone off the map. Wow, that was really sad, but it was really powerful. It stuck with me. End of season two, Tech makes that sacrifice. Wow, our characters are dealing with so much loss, and Omega gets abducted, and Crosshair's in the hands of the Empire. Wow, so much loss. What an impact on me. Can't wait for the next season. They finally win at the end of this season, and it feels like the impact isn't as strong because I'm not heartbroken. 
which feels weird to say. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like no, yeah. It's almost it's almost like um I like I'm gonna liken it to The Walking Dead. I feel like I the build up to Negan, incredible t- television, incredible television. But once Negan shows up and he bashes the faces in of beloved characters, I stopped caring. You know what I mean? Which is like weird because I so feel like it's almost so like much the good shit got <laughs> happened after that though. <laughs> that is false. <laughs> Bro, but, don't don't do that, dog. Like, <laughs> that show was still the what the bro the fucking whispers arc. That shit was fire, dog. Oh, I read the comics and it was better in the comics. So <laughs> yeah, I know they, I know they made a lot of changes, but I, I fucked with the whispers. But but you but you know, you know what it, you you said something. Hold on, did we freeze again? We back? Are we good? No, you're good. I want to say something else. I couldn't hear you. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, you had said something yeah, yeah. earlier, uh, and right, the delay is nuts. Uh, you had said something earlier, and I kind of uh, agree with you, and it kind of like encapsulates my feeling of like, oh yeah, they really Star Wars it up here. I'm not mad at how at at the ending. I'm mad at how they got to the ending. And you had texted me. You was just like, you would have made some different choices. I agree wholeheartedly. I would have made some different choices. I feel like they completely fumbled the bag with how the fight. One, I loved the action fights. The action scenes were great. The fight against. Yes, Force they were very well done. Prison I think clones it, and were great. It goes without saying that the animation and everything like oh yeah it's always great peak peak it's amazing like they they technically do a fantastic job like everyone and and the score was also incredible so i don't want like that, that to be lost but yeah oh yeah no for sure, for sure for sure but what what i was yeah. gonna, what i was going to say is just like you so i would imagine if both of us got the same idea and i will say granted uh we are higher level of locked in star wars fans than maybe like the layman but i also felt like Clone Force X was the parallels to uh, Clone Force 99. I also got that. Like, oh, they got a big guy. They got a sniper guy. Mm-hmm. Why would you not have each guy go one-on-one with their with shadow? This guy. Like, I feel like, yeah, like that would have been amazing. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, that would have been really cool. I can't deny that there was like the potential for that. And then, and it'll actually like, uh, if we move on to my next character note, like it's Wrecker and, and this is also yeah. something I would have changed, but uh, just to throw out like kind of like a parallel to that, you and I grew up in the generation that watched Power Rangers in space. And there were like the, I really mad at myself for not remembering like the dark Rangers, like actual like name the, where they like the, all, the psycho Rangers, the psycho Rangers. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, fantastic. Like, uh, pulpy like sentai storytelling right amazing like character arc like i'll never forget that growing up as a kid and they have like an they had an opportunity to do something similar um here and instead um you know we see them work together to take out a few of them in different ways uh but really the the main and like to pun intended the main wrecking ball in the situation who like really throws that fight in the right direction is wrecker um Mm-hmm. I'll say this: his injuries like had me concerned the entire episode, um, and I'm I am after two watches. I am ultimately glad that he survived, but I think they missed like a lot of opportunities here. To I think if they were going to kill someone and have it be like bittersweet, and you know some of them make it out, but someone goes, he was teed up, and that's yeah. what I think that they changed. I think they changed it. I think they were planning on killing him, and they decided not to ultimately. Because he doesn't have a lot of lines, Play. played it safe, and and they played it. They played it a bit safe here. And like I said, at the end of the day, when I'm like, when all is said and done, I am still glad that he did not bite the dust. But there are certain things, and to me, Wrecker, his growth as a character, is not just simply not wanting to blow stuff up anymore. And they didn't give him an opportunity to blow anything up this episode despite him being an absolute powerhouse and one of the coolest part of the action sequences and the, the really the reason why the batch is able to walk away from everything. Um, so if there was something I would have changed, I would have given him a button to press for sure, <laughs> which I know sounds ridiculous, but it would have been a nice callback. And it also would have been nice if with all the other clones helping them out, if he got to say, 
his line as a callback to his first appearance, saying the cavalry has arrived, having it be the name of the episode. That is also yeah. something that I would have changed. That would have been very fan servicey for me. That that's the type of fan service that that I can just I can 100 percent get behind because for a character like Wrecker, who kind of like is supposed to be that fun character, I think it's fine when when stuff like that is played out through, you know, I guess like more of the fun characters. But uh, yeah. what are your thoughts that, on how on Wrecker's role throughout the finale? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, it is funny that uh, jokingly, again, last episode, we had said, like, oh, why to ask the question, like, if the cavalry ends up just being the batch and the prison clones, would you be okay with that? And that's exactly what it ha- ended up happening. Oh, I'm fine with that. Like, I'm just, I just kind of wish that it would have been no, acknowledged a little I just more. thought it was funny. I just thought that was funny because, like, as it was happening, I was like, "Oh shit!" Predicted this, and like as a joke, I was like, "I predicted this." <laughs> same, same, hey man, they can't the shadow us. clones. <laughs> Look, same with the shadow clones. Like, oh, what if they're what if they aren't anybody? And that's exactly what ended up happening. But um, yeah, you know, it's I, funny. I, I'll, I, uh, I'll have to listen what? to our episode last week. Sorry, not to cut you off. I know there's a mad yeah. delay. Not your fault. Um, but like, I'll have to listen to last week's episode and then listen to to this and and see in hindsight if we kind of went back on our feelings. Maybe we're we are feeling some type of way, but I do feel like we called a lot of this stuff or or like yeah. inadvertently subverted our own expectations by being like, nah, they wouldn't do this, <laughs> and then and then that's exactly what they did. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what happened. But uh, to go to go to record, I do feel like it was a missed opportunity like much like you uh just my love for him as a character i'm happy that he got to go get that slice of life but i feel like (laughs) fucked up as it sounds he would have been the perfect person to kill like it would have been like no not wrecker but like life could go on as fucked up as that sounds like. it is it is it is it is but, uh, but i 100 percent feel and hear where you're coming from and and like like i said i mean i can't reiterate it enough i am happy that he does get his slice of life and he gets to grow up and he gets to be the fun uncle to omega if if we're saying hunter's the dad he is 100 percent the fun the funkle because <laughs> yeah, uh because the part you know what part where i was just like oh this is it and i would have been like at peace and i thought oh, what a good death like when the shadow clone whose uh identity is, doesn't matter when he took the laser spike and like jammed it into where the bear had cut already where he was hurt i was like oh that's it like this is yeah he's gonna check and i was like good death like i would i was like okay with like especially with like crosshair being right there and then that would have been a thing that he would have like oh i couldn't i couldn't save him like that could have been like yeah yeah no i there were so many times where i thought he was gonna die i'm not even exaggerating i think there were like literally three or four different moments where i was like he might be dying right here which is crazy yeah um but uh but i really i really did uh i, I liked this whole episode I, I liked how um he got to put in that work and put hands and feet on uh pretty much a lot of uh clone force x <laughs> i didn't i'd have to go back and look but i feel like he probably killed the majority of them <laughs> uh, if he, he if big, it, big... if he didn't kill a majority of them he was he responsible for in, all of their yeah. deaths yeah yeah <laughs> So he 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 Vegeta versus the Ginyu Force that situation. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's <laughs> he just ran, yeah, he just right, he just racked them up. But um, I will say one of my uh, more favorite. Don't judge my grammar. I know that's not an accurate sentence. But uh, one of one of my more favorite parts that I liked <laughs> is when uh, when Wrecker got to break out and uh omega was just like hey you're forgetting one thing and he was like she was like, oh, she was like i have them like and then he broke out and just like started fucking shit up yeah yeah I, I, so I good enjoyed that so good but <laughs> yeah but i i i do feel I, like i have him, one final record note not view. dying i do feel the delay the <laughs> i was delay. just saying no, uh, it's killing us i man. do feel like <laughs> yeah i was i was just gonna say i do feel like um him there is probably a version out there that will never come out where he did get killed. And I feel like they did call it audible. It's one of the things I feel like they definitely changed for sure. Yeah. That's, that is the literal, I actually thought of you in that moment because I think that you, I think you have a good mind for like storytelling in in terms of like what, what would make something more compelling or like what, um, 
it may not be the popular choice and it, it, it may even be a hard choice but like i i actually think that like when i was saying when i sent that text message to you this morning about things that i would have changed or that you would have changed like that was something where i was like we'd probably be on the same page here so i'm not i'm not shocked <laughs> that, you, that you feel this way um but I guess it is what it is. Uh, my last note that I have on Wrecker here is at the end of the day, Wrecker was the most destructive force imaginable at Tantus, second only to the Zillow Beast. <laughs> because I don't think anything could have done that much damage. <laughs> was I, I was, I was, uh, and I, I get because like they didn't, they couldn't let the Zillow Beast become the big bad. But like, you're literally on an electric mountain. Why didn't it try to like charge up? <laughs> like, yeah, no, that's a good point. I was about to say that's literally what how we were introduced that you were like addicted to power and that you just wanted to zap the power out of every place to grow bigger. And you're literally on a mountain of of electricity, and they've the, a, a mountain of electricity where they've been keeping you prisoner and poking and prodding at you, and you didn't want to take that moment to. Z- to charge up and just wreck shit. <laughs> hey, I thought that yeah. was interesting. Oh, it's it's definitely convenient writing that the Zillow Beast's first objective was just to get out, right? Yeah. To leave. Yep. But I hear you. I hear you. I think like they established that it's like almost addicted to energy, right? And wants it to to grow into that like ultimate form of itself. Um but yeah, and then well, we're gonna move on to your your favorite character, who I think that they did really good. My notes on Crosshair here, just a tragedy incarnate. I think Crosshair's story has been nothing short of poetic. You know, I think from his gut wrenching lines about the death of Clone Force ninety nine through the loss of Tech, um, to getting his shooting hand like literally chopped off mid episode, uh, like we kind of saw his PTSD ridden like he was forced to rely on his brothers. This is another thing where it's didn't come up in my Hunter and Wrecker notes, but I really liked that. They were like, you're not sacrificing yourself. Like we yeah, came here together part. and we knew the risks. That was an awesome, awesome part. And he, he is forced to lean on his brothers literally to get the job done and save Omega. And I think that that was just without him there, they don't succeed. Um, they all had their part to play, but he, in that moment, had to face more fears than the rest of them, which makes, I think, his triumph much more rewarding in that way. And I also, I, it's not my point, and I wish I had taken the note down, but someone on Twitter was like, when he got his hand cut off, it was almost like the release of not, you know what I mean? Like, he's not tied down to the shakiness of it anymore, Ooh, which allowed okay. him to make that shot. I like that, uh, like, as a storytelling standpoint, um, I think he was great. I know you probably have a lot of thoughts about Crosshair, so so feel free to rant. I think this might be the only positive time for you on this episode, <laughs> but go for it, brother. <laughs> nah, so, yeah, uh, I loved yeah everything that you just said uh, I thought was perfection. Him wanting to make the sacrifice play and immediately that getting kiboshed, and it was just like, yeah, nah, <laughs> we don't do that here. I, the part where he uh, told Wrecker, he was just like Clone Force ninety nine died with tech. Like I was like, oh, that like <laughs> that hit me. That was but, that hit me but, core. <laughs> but again, another missed opportunity. I feel like they should have like addressed that after they like figured it out. Like oh, we're still Clone Force ninety nine. No matter. Like I feel like that was like just to just to have that be such a strong, powerful, highlighted line, and there to be like no resolution to that claim they're like oh we're still clone force 99 like or whatever like some something like that i just thought that not addressing that was a strange character choice i will say what you just said does make me a little less agitated that his tremors was just ptsd but that again goes to technically it's fine because it makes sense that he was tortured these are side effects from it but it makes the whole meditation thing which we thought was going to lead to something now pointless like his whole that whole little sub story um do we blip are you froze are you just sitting really still no you're, <laughs> i was sitting very still. all right but my man i was so that whole little sub story about omega trying to help crosshair find zen and them saying like oh like your tests are coming back fine it must be mental there's something that's blocking you that's making you have this we need to figure out and address it for it to just be like 
side effects of the torture, which again is fine. But then why make a big to do about, oh, there's something going on in his brain that he needs to get past. And we thought that it was going to be like, oh, the trauma of the torture, which it was. But we thought that there might be like an event tied to that, that we would then get to see played out in the show. And the fact that it was another one of those things, a lot like Necromancer, where it's just like, oh, hey, we get to see what they were trying to do with Hunter and Wrecker. Uh, not 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 a not I want to switch their names on purpose. Now. <laughs> not Rampart <laughs> when he was just like, oh, yeah, we tried to do it on him, but it didn't work. So it's just like mm-hmm. you kind of got to like, oh, OK, they tortured him. They did the shock therapy. He resisted. He has lingering side effects. I did feel like making it seem like it was more than just that when they were trying to like help him with the meditation is another thing that I'm like, I feel like there was a shift in how they wanted this show to end somewhere midway through. Cause I feel like, I feel like they teed up so many things that were supposed to possibly be bigger and then like hit a pivot. Like why give us, multiple scenes of Rex wanting to help and he wasn't involved in this at all they even name dropped him twice Mm -hmm. in this episode and he had nothing to do with this liberation mission but the whole build up and the setup and trying to get the, the coordinates and trying to figure out the plan he was involved in all of that so it was just like, and then you call this episode the Calvary has arrived. So logic will lead you to think that, oh, like the clones that we know and love are gonna go storm Tantus and try to help free the other brothers in Omega. So I was like, I, I really do feel like there was a massive rewrite of the ending. And whether it came down from Disney and it was just like more kid friendly, but it's just like Again, the, the the PTSD uh with crosshair, the Omega being force sensitive, uh that specific clone X looking very techy and getting a lot of uh, screen time. It just seems like there was a a bunch of things that were hinted at that there was a bunch of reoccurring um themes with those things that made you think like, oh, okay, this is definitely gonna be something to play out that just didn't have any I won't say didn't have any resolution but it was just like dumbed down dumbed down might be harsh but that's the only thing I can think of it was dumbed down to its simplest form if that makes sense like it was like yeah it's it's like it, was, it opened it was up a logic lot. it was logic the way it was just like oh yeah it's PTSD yeah. because he was tortured there, there you go <laughs> hey, what right <laughs> they give you they give you like a lot of um real world explanations for things to conveniently cover up a lot of like loose plot threads or what one thousand percent what may have been like and listen like because we're not the writers we're not in the writers room and you're and it does feel like there was like a a shift or something they decided to change things or like it must have i wouldn't be surprised if this episode specifically went through more rewrites than any episode of star wars animation like that's that's how much i feel like it feels like there was things that were changed or like moved around, shifted, like to it's, be different. It, se- it seemed like things started to change after the Asage episode. Like it, se- it seemed like the, not necessarily tonally, but it went from, for me, it went from being a very layered show to a very surface level show by the end of it like the season finale for me which is again why i say technically it's fine it just seemed very surface level like all all the undertones which we've loved this show for it just seems Mm -hmm. like i thrown to the wind and it was like hey let's just address these main beats like you said let's just logic away the loose ends like oh she's a force sensitive mad people are force sensitive you saw the last jedi anybody could be force sensitive that's just life Oh, he has these yeah. tremors. That's just that's just residue from the torture. Like it was just like, oh, okay, <laughs> like, that's fine. Yeah, no, I think that's that's a fair criticism. You are upset that they're not playing up to the level of like intellectual storytelling that we've built out of it in our imagination, right? Like, especially because they teased it. 
like they've right, teased right, right. it. Like there are reasons we thought this way, or like they've led us yeah, to believe yes. that things are going to play yes. out this way. So, so I hear where you're coming from, like from that standpoint. I will that's, say this: that's perfect, perfectly explained. It's like I didn't think of these things because it's just in my head. Like there's shit that happened in the show that led me there, and then you went away from it. So yeah, I'm, yeah. now I'm just left here standing with the back. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think um, something that is it's really hard to watch shows that are this short in episode length on a week to week basis and not pull out things that aren't there if that makes sense I no, yeah. will I 100% and to your point right after the Asajj episode let's just say you watched the remainder of the season back to back to back to back to back would probably be more rewarding for you as a viewer as opposed to watching it week to week to week to week because i will say this if stories are typically told in arcs which the bad batch has not done the bad batch has felt very linear in its storytelling like period i would say that the last few episodes of the bad batch felt very arc heavy and disregarded a lot of the other stuff that it built up to it with the intention in mind, clearly. But that also leaves a lot of people, a lot of room for disappointment for people who have felt really attached to some of the other story threads. I mean, how many times have I kept saying like, oh, the people from Ryloth are probably going to show up again? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and uh, that's also something where it's like, and I want to be pretty clear because I think um, Filoni gets a lot of credit, but he's not he's not the person who's running this show. It's uh, Jennifer Corbett, Brad Rao. Like they did a great job. I think that they still have a very masterful show in a, in a lot of ways. But in terms of like the ending did not end like a Filoni show. Filoni likes to pull all of his story threads together, all of them, and have have an impact in some way, shape or form. This just didn't do that, which is different for Star Wars animation because it's one of the only Star Wars animation shows that hasn't been helmed by him. And I I really hate to say this because I think that, you know, the crew on Resistance, they obviously put a lot of heart into it. But that show just uh, the business on Star Wars Resistance doesn't doesn't count. (laughs) (laughs) It just just doesn't Uh, doesn't count. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I do i feel bad like i don't want to the people like worked really hard on that show and i'm not trying to poo-poo it but it just from a caliber standpoint is so be- beneath the other star wars animated shows um nah, i feel you. it's the show yeah the show i think um, <laughs> yeah, no i mean people don't hold it up to that same standard it probably got canceled before it even had a chance to get legs under itself i mean the clone wars wasn't like the greatest in its first two seasons and then look at what it becomes um i think uh last thing on like crosshair here i think that the ptsd thing being a real reason why or like i get with like the meditation thing um i'm glad that you brought that up and i think you're right to be disappointed by that because it could have been a really rewarding character moment for him to like take a deep breath and make that shot if that makes sense yeah. um no, for sure and that's all that's all it would have taken right but i think it's also very real to show that someone even though someone's working on themselves and trying to be better they still struggle with it yeah. you know what i mean like as someone who and i know that you kind of deal with this too like we have our own mental like i you know i deal with anxiety and it's like uh i can work on being better about being anxious as much as I want. I'm never going to stop being anxious though. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, like me too. I, li- I live with it be- every day, bro. <laughs> right. So with him being so close to Tantus, I think it was fair from a storytelling standpoint to have him be as shaky as he was. That being said, we are watching a fictional story and we did take some time to see that meditation thing. So I don't think that you're in yeah. the wrong here for feeling like Why? <laughs> we I will, could, we could I have will, got a really cool moment. Will, You're I, saying it because I will, you wanted a, a I will say this. thing. Yeah, I will say this. I like the fact 
that he wasn't fixed because i felt like that does inject some realism to him like oh no this is just something that he's fucked up from and like you said being back on tantus is flaring back up i would i enjoyed that but that kind of i put it in that same box with like clone x don't tease that this could be tech or put him around Tech's goggles and shit about tech and the the headset and the backpack and everything for it to be nothing. So like you just said, I do feel like you teed it up that this was going to be a bigger thing. You literally had lines of dialogue that said physically he's fine. There's something else here that he has to figure out. Like you made it a point to put that in front of me. And then do nothing with it. But yeah. then it's like blame not not blame the watcher for then being like, oh, that was that was just PTSD. It's like it's like, why would you tease it if it wasn't meant to be anything? Like like had had that whole meditation shit not been a thing, I would have no gripes with it just being PTSD. Cause like cause it makes right. sense. None of my issues with anything from the finale is that it doesn't make sense. The Zolo Beast not sucking up power. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh but every every everything else, like their sensical decisions, like Clone Force X, the whole troop just being captured clones that were like conditioned, makes sense. That was the point of Tances. But you made it a point to make their identity a mystery. Why, if who they were wasn't important, like just let them be zombie clones, like just let that be that, and I'd have no issue, like with, with any of it. Like, like it'd be surprised. So, I put the PTSD in that box, like, had none of that meditation stuff or the actual line saying, like, physically, he's fine. There's something else there. They pad made him. She's perfectly healthy, but for some reason, she's dying. Like, they was like, physically, he's fine, but we don't know what's going on. And then you did nothing with that storyline. <laughs> like, 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 well, yeah, his heart, she was, he, was he dying of a broken heart? He had tremors of a broken heart. <laughs> is that what it was, Star Wars? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, that, that, must, that must have been what it was. But, uh, must but I been. will say... <laughs> whoever whoever uh on Twitter put that bit like him losing the shaky hand was him like getting rid of that baggage. I I do enjoy that. Cuz in, in another meta way, I mean, the best way for a sniper to not be a soldier anymore is to not have your shooting hand. <laughs> so it's like yeah. his, he yeah. has no choice. He has no choice but to retire. Even though my man is dirty with his other hand, his off hand too. Like so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> like, but um, still, you know, it's funny. He loses a hand, still walks away. The most badass character out of all of them. <laughs> Just, One is what it is. Thousand percent, bro. <laughs> One thousand percent. Now him and Echo got matching nubs. It's, it's great. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's great. <laughs> One thing I did find fun. <clears throat> One thing that I did find a bit funny was that uh, when the fight got serious, serious, Echo chose to like ditch the hand. <laughs> like he's like of all times yeah. to get rid of another hand is during a fight. He was like was he funny. was. It looks like it's like he wasn't used to it. We're actually echoes the next character. Yeah, yeah exactly. So let me dive into that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, his confidence in Omega's ability shined. I think this episode, the most sarcastic member of the Bad Batch, stood out while blending in, being a vital reason the mission was a success. And it meant a lot as like a long time Star Wars animation viewer to see an original member of Domino Squad be the pivotal force in like freeing the clones on Tantus um, that to me was another really good full circle huge callback to the Clone Wars um, having been imprisoned himself and experimented on by the Techno Union being able to free the clones at Tantus feels really good it was a really rewarding character arc this final few episodes for Echo he he has like shined in my opinion um, through a lot of it and the and one of my favorite line deliveries it comes up multiple times, but like they freed the Zillow beast and he's like, yeah, that's what I would have done. <laughs> and then, yeah. and then when they're outside in the wrecker hunter and, uh, and crosshair, crosshair's and crosshair. like, was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, was like, oh, Omega. And was like, oh, Omega. Oh, Omega. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that shit and was, was so like, good. Omega. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. That was oh, man. Like, the, I think that's one of those things where, um, 
while it was very Star Warsy um, in terms of because you had said that like it leaned into some of its tropes, that was in in a weird way. While while I hear where you're where you're coming from, where it's kind of like a weakness, a lot of its strengths were because oh, it I was so. It star wars yeah yeah it just like i I love every every moment that they get to show us how well the batch know each other i love that shit like that's that's always it's like a ninja turtles type thing too right yeah that that always makes me happy like when they get the show like um i might have misheard it but i don't think i did but when when crosshair wanted to do like the sacrifice play did hunter say like something like oh if you even if you're thinking about like doing plan 99 like just forget about it like i think he yeah. it was like yeah. something along those lines like no, i said, like how that's like pretty much what he says all right cool cool but I, I like that that was that acknowledgement without even him saying like oh yeah we doing 99 he's like bro don't he's like don't even think about doing 99 like we're not doing that that part obviously the 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 zola beast part and you know what other part i loved and honestly i told you the bridge scene was my favorite thing in the whole episode i loved that bridge scene from start to finish everything and i I also i don't know if it was intentional but i'm gonna say it was i loved the fact that it was on a bridge in the heavy rain Echoing Obi Wan versus Jango Fett on Camino, and we're dealing with like the assist, like the guy who like ended the cloner situation and shit. Yeah, so yeah. Just, like I thought that was, I thought that was very cathartic that we got clones and uh, not Rampart <laughs> 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 on this bridge in the rain. <laughs> I was just like, oh, this is episode two. Like it was dope, but it, in all honesty, it might have been my second favorite part of the whole episode and it was literally it wasn't even a a thing or a line that was spoken i love the fact that when echo and omega send the kids with emery to get on the ship echo doesn't even think to tell omega to go to safety he doesn't even say like you go with them. I'll like I'll handle yeah. the rest. So like get to say he's just like all right, Emery, take the kids. You ready? Like we out. Like he's just like he yeah. knows. Like, like oh, you're part of this too. I can't do this without you. You're part of the best. Let's go. You're not a kid anymore. Let's go. And I love how like because typically in that situation you would get that like oh you need to go with them. Like what are you doing? Or like yeah, she yeah. would act like she was going jump off at the last minute when the shit pulls mm-hmm. off like we've seen we've seen those tropes all the time like so you know many times, yeah. <laughs> so so many times so many times so the fact that echo didn't even bother to try to tell her to go and he was just on some like all right emory get them kids to safety we we got we got to finish the mission like I, I loved that part that he just knew like yo no he were never going with them i need you little like come on <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's go thank you thank you so much for bringing that up um because because in my notes for Omega, um, I definitely framed it as like her decision to go back the second time. Um, but yeah, Echo is no fight whatsoever. You're 100 percent right. Like he considers her another member of the squad and didn't envision going in there without her. So yeah. um, just great, great call out. And like like you said, yeah, that is a, it's a great fucking moment. It's a huge character moment, in my opinion, for Omega to be just recognized like that um yeah and it's been she wasn't like to the, the kid she other... wasn't the kid anymore yeah yeah um we can move on to omega i, I think echo's stuff is pretty clear cut like the reason why the reasons why his arc was meaningful i think um they speak for themselves and if you watch the clone wars you kind of understand what's going on but go ahead i, I was just gonna say real quick to uh just stay on echo because she was with him um uh, this this could just be me being nitpicky and it could just be again us having leaned into something that might not have been there but we had talked about um emery's story during the episode where she was like running the vault with the kids and everything and how she felt that giving this kidnapped child a doll was her helping but like no like you're still doing this thing to these kids doing a doll didn't mean shit and we had kind of talked about how she kind of had like stockholm syndrome like this is like all she knew like good soldiers follow orders like crosshair and everything and we kind of were like that's a really cool thing 
I feel like it was a missed opportunity by having her just join the batch, their team. Like, no, no muss, no fuss, no conversation, no, like, she was just like, oh, I thought, she literally said, <laughs> gave us some thought, these people are fucked up, I'm on y'all team. Like, I didn't, I didn't really like that. Yeah. Because it just, it's, well, can it seemed I really quick. Compare it. Can I compare it to another Star Wars moment that I think? Um, yes, this one, this one to me is I think uh, it's a lesson that I think George has gone on like record stating that like there's a big part of Star Wars that has to deal with like this specific um, aspect of s- storytelling. And I, I think it's uh, I don't want to say it's like unique to Star Wars, but it is kind of like a through line that I think you see come up from time to time. Um, it's kind of like when Darth Vader decides to suddenly turn on the Emperor. If that makes sense. Like he's been there bad. He's fighting Luke the whole time. And then he has a change of heart. And in that moment, he decides to do the right thing. This dude who has been nothing but evil for the last, what? 20 some fucking years is like, (laughs) Hey, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to make the sacrifice play and I'm going to do the right thing for the galaxy, which the, when broken down to its simplest parts I guess is just like you every day is and every opportunity where you have a choice to make is the opportunity to do the right thing or make the good choice fighting against the dark side so yeah Emery's lived in this fucked up life that she's had and she has had the change of heart she's using today to be like I'm going to do the right thing and then the rest of her story is, you know, we don't know what it's going to be. It might not even ever be told, but <laughs> Echo goes on to talk to her at the end of the episode and she about Senator Chuchi and what she's doing. And she says she has a lot to atone for. Um, yeah. Which I think is, you know, good growth for her for having such a limited role on the show. Um, and to me, it felt it felt a little less cheap because of that. And I think I had that kind of like in the back of my mind. Like as things went on, um, but I see where you're coming from. I don't know if that helped. Yeah, because it because it just seemed it. no, no that that I I like that a lot and like like but that kind of just goes to just I guess like my overall um, um, thoughts and feelings on it is it makes sense. It's just when you put it next to how they were framing it, it seems like a pivot or it seems like the safe choice because it's like. Whether you go back to the beginning of the season when Omega was just like, why are you doing this? And she was like, yeah, I'm doing my job. Like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is all I know and everything like Mm -hmm. it seemed it seemed that every time we saw Emery. She was aware that this was fucked up. Like she was, it wasn't like yeah. it wasn't like she was oblivious to what was happening. She knew that they were kidnapping kids. She knew that they were experimenting on her brothers for all intents and purposes. She knew that they were keeping Omega prisoner. She knew that her blood was valuable. She knew that she knew all these things, and she like had that acknowledgement. Like, yeah, this is fucked up, but this is just the status quo. This is just what it is. This is what we do. So, like, for then. Even 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 her vibe in the last episode was still kind of, oh, I'm going to help you because I care about Omega. Fuck everything else. I care about Omega. I'm going to help you because mm-hmm. I feel like I owe it to her. Not because I'm a piece of shit that I've been experimenting on my own kind as somebody else's orders. But then it feels like in this finale, literally we get a sentence yeah what they're doing here is wrong i want to (laughs) help it's like you've been known what they were doing here is wrong you've acknowledged multiple times that you're aware this ain't right but it is what it is maybe maybe she just didn't have the courage or wherewithal to break them out until echo and the batch showed up and and like i said maybe she couldn't see it 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 makes sense like yeah like i said it, it makes all the sense in the world but i feel like that Stockholm syndrome shit that we were kind of picking up on, I feel like that would have been an amazing thing to play out in the series finale. Like if she was kind of like torn between like kind of like what Crosshair and I guess maybe they didn't want to give that beat to two different characters, but that's kind of been Emery's whole thing. Even from even from our first introduction of her at the end of season two, like it was like 
she was like dead behind the eyes. Like she was just like, "Hey, yeah. I'm your older sister. Let me let me experiment on you." <laughs> like type of situation. So I, I do feel like they just kind of they kind of um, I feel like a lot with with her and not Hemlock. I feel like I don't like that they just made him. <laughs> not, not it's funny no, it's funny you say that because i was about to bring him up i was gonna say like they'd never cross paths yet they like have the they have the two sides of the coin right rampart is takes the completely selfish path and uh emery takes the selfless path but it's yeah two characters who have been known to just be the the cogs in the machine so and that now but they're i, I like you know i liked your not I liked your theory for not Hemlock of him possibly making the sacrifice play or being like, all right, well, fuck the Empire. Like they 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 threw me in prison and had me on on doing doing manual labor and everything. I like they, they took him prisoner at the end of the previous episode. I liked your strategy that you felt that he might you know. uh you know what? Enemies become friends. Friends become enemies. We're all richer for mm-hmm. the journey. So, like, for him to then just be just a scumbag, and again, makes sense because he's been a scumbag. So it would just make yeah. sense for him to can continue to be a scumbag. But I feel like that was the safe choice. Like it was just like, oh, let's just keep him bad. Let's make him one yeah. dimensional. We don't got to give him death. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Matt, we do say that there's too many people making it out alive. So I guess we had to crack some eggs. <laughs> yeah, no nah, facts. Yeah, him, him killing Nala Say. I was just like that. That 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 one was sad. Nala Say getting killed was sad. Oh like, fuck, Nala Say. I'm so glad she's dead. All the shit she's done. She's the reason Fives is dead. Yeah, I act nah, like look. I don't hold a grudge. I'm fucking Tom nah, Petty over this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm, I'm here for it, but uh, I, I will say, I do, I did like how when they were uh like at the the um, the cells and they were like letting everybody out and Omega was just like, yeah, let's go get rid of the that John. She was like, no, your place is here with them because uh, that felt um that line felt really important. Like f- with with Omega having been Nalise's assistant on Camino. But she wasn't really allowed to like interact with all the other clones. They kind of like kept her to herself and like being isolated and stuff. So like to have Nala say, "Be like, no, your place is here with them." It kind if it, it felt bigger than just that moment. It felt like, hey, like you were you you've always been a clone. Like I'm trying to think of like how to say it, not in a bad way. Like oh, you've always been a clone. But you know, like back when they were on Camino they didn't want her in with the lot like they they kept her as like you know a a, a protected like little puppy and you know caged and like didn't let her see the world or do anything like that so like now let's say saying like your place is here just like this is these are this is these are your people this is your kind Mm -hmm. they're your people this is where you've always belonged. We were wrong to try to keep that from you. That's that's how I that's how that line felt to me. And I really liked that moment where she was just like, I'll go do it because I know this is probably a yeah. one way trip. Like, I'll go do it. You you be with your family. Like, because like, no, it was definitely the fuck that shit, the- shit that Nala says done. Like she's, I would say, probably the closest thing that Omega's had to a mother. So it was just mm-hmm. like that is still like her family kinda like they have that familiar bond and everything so yeah that, that I, I enjoyed that moment quite a bit I think that's fair I also think it's another example of a character who's done a lot of fucked up shit making that decision in the moment to do the right thing which is great um, and the the death for both of them uh, in that in that room feels warranted and I, I definitely was just like I just like the way it played out um not a lot to, to say there. Yeah, it was great. Uh, we, the whole scene was great. We've covered a, we. I feel like we almost did this on purpose, but outside of Hemlock, uh, we've covered every character in my notes except for Omega. Um, I, we have to talk about her. I think there's like two aspects of it. It's the becoming a leader and leading the kids to safety, but then also finding her spot with the batch and how she like fits seamlessly like into there as well. Yeah. There were so many things throughout the episode. I think that like encompassed all the things that she's learned from her brothers. 
Does that make sense? Like, like they did a really good job in this yeah. episode of breaking it down to like, like she was her inner hunter was showing when she was helping the kids out of the base and and got them to safety, and then her inner echo was showing when she went to go back in. Right, her um, inner wrecker was showing when she got a little cocky and made the whole thing about like I've got them, you know. Uh, her inner, yeah, you know, crosshair was showing when she slipped a uh, toothpick esque <laughs> knife out of her sleeve to do something like completely targeted and uncalled for um, before stabbing Hemlock. I think she just, um, and I, I can't point to something tech off the top of my head right now, but I'm sure that there's. He has his goggles. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. Um, but like, she really did. I would like, kind of have liked for her to put them on. I thought she was going to put them on, and I would have like doubted. Like, if she just kind of like you know tie from Digimon the situation and just like yeah, put yeah. them on her head. I, I thought that's what she was about to do, but she just like adjusted it on her. Concept. Like with Hunter's bandana. That yeah, that would have been cool. Definitely yeah, nice exactly. Touch. Yeah. Um, really happy that she got like her happy ending um of any character i feel like she deserved it i don't i don't know what it is i think it's just like we you know she was the youngest protagonist i think we've had in star wars so it felt really good to just kind of like see her grow into this she was, like she was literally bred in captivity like literally yeah <laughs> like, yeah so just like to have been on that journey cuz like when we meet omega like she literally hadn't seen outside. <laughs> like, yeah, it's cr- we so we it's see, we like, experience her stepping on dirt for the first time. <laughs> like, exactly, and now exactly. look at her. So it's just yeah. like, right to go to go from that to now you're about to go be a, a resistance fighter. Like it's like you know that's that is like a, a full journey. And to what to your point where you know she's probably one of the younger protagonists we've had. I can't really think of. A show outside of maybe I won't I won't I was gonna say Naruto or Shaman King, but they're they're time skips that lead you to where we start. I can't really think of a show where we've got to essentially live the whole life of the main character because you know typically we get dropped into a show when kids are like older and i and i know omega was Mm -hmm. uh older at the start of the show but she ain't did shit for all intents and purposes she was an infant like she literally hadn't been no that's outside of the lab at camino yeah like she knew she knew things but she like her experience level it's almost like comparing a kid who's been homeschooled to a kid who's been in public school, right? The experiences yeah. and the stuff that they've seen are just vastly different in a way that like one of them could have been so sheltered that their experience, like I don't want to like compare it to like book smart, street smart, but it's maybe even like a common no, sense. We're, I feel like we're saying the same thing. Things. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you're like, I think that that's, that's so that's such a good point. Um, and yeah, like we are, it is like an infancy of experiences, right? That's, I guess that's the best way to, to put it. But, uh, and that was the point you made. Um, so I'm just piggybacking off of you clearly right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause like, no, no, exactly. Cause, cause yeah. Cause like, cause I'm, cause I'm, I'm thinking of like other shows, you know, like, yeah, like Pokemon, Digimon, even if we keep it within Star Wars, you know, when Star Wars episode four and or one or, and or just Star Wars, depending on when you listen, when you watched it. Luke's already a teenager. <laughs> like he was 19. already to go off to the he's Empire almost an adult. Academy. Like, well, I guess yeah, he's exactly. an adult. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. So we like missed his whole formulative years. Uh and then like I said, Ash, when he turns 10, he's 10. Man's been alive for 10 years up until that time for he's a Pokemon trainer. The Digi Destins, they're all at summer camp from school. All were friends before that or knew each other. So it's just like typically in shows. The reason why I was going to say Naruto is because you do get him as a baby, like when the Fox Demon like takes over and stuff. But then you get that jump and then he's a kid. And same with Shaman King. You get like the O and the twins and the demon and one. But then you get the jump. But like with Omega, because she hadn't done shit pre me and her's like we literally grew up with her. Literally all of her life experiences we saw play out in the show. Mm -hmm. So like 
her her getting that win or her getting that life, it hits different because it's like, damn, like who would look at look at you, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Look, like look look at you, look at you, look at you that you know you weren't allowed to go anywhere. And now you about to go everywhere. <laughs> you about yeah. to do all the things right now and whatnot, which is which is awesome like, and whatnot. So I'm, I'm I'm very happy for her. I really do hope that this isn't the last that we see of her. I don't think it is, but like I don't I so I'm torn because again I'm original trilogy era. The I'm Rise of the Empire out honestly like mm-hmm. at this point like i've seen enough of those stories like let's 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 move on but i also don't want omega to be a cameo somewhere else like just like yeah. a like how they did with asage like i don't want i don't want her to get the asage ventures treatment where it's just like this is a character that has a cult following and popularity we have investment and time and knowledge and history with this person and we're just gonna like pop her somewhere else to like help someone else's story unless she's like an extended cameo like oh you're here now like this is like where we're at Uh, yeah like i don't really want to just like have her show up as like help somewhere and then it just be like a one-off because then it's yeah like like, i think they could build yeah they should build a story around her like if she's going to be a pilot and they want to do a pilot centric show and you know that i think that's something we have not gotten in star wars it's been teased a lot they want to there's like that great um legend series of books rogue squadron that people rave about like you know if if it ends up being more we got that canceled uh what was it kathy kelly kathy kennedy whoever uh the the rogue squadron movie or the the one that oh was uh, patty jenkins the, the pirates yeah. Yeah, Patty Jenkins movie. Yeah, Patty Jenkins, which is yeah. Like, I mean, I'm fine with that. We could, we that's could, a different. Uh, like, uh, you know what? You know what, Matt? With an Omega show, <laughs> that's like. Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I'm like, I'm okay with maybe original trilogy, Age of the Empire stuff, if it's in a vein of Star Wars that we haven't seen before. Like, if they give us an X-wing show, yeah. like. I'm not going to be upset if it's really good. And it could be like the Gundam of the star Wars universe. You know what I mean? Like that type of, oh, yeah. that type of thing. No, so, like um, we'll see. I, I, I know you said you're age of empire out, but I think there's I a mean, few shows that we've, we've pitched the path. I, I really want to see what happens with Asajj next. So we'll have to, I, we'll have yeah, to see what star Wars comes fine. out with. I would be okay if Omega shows up in the next season of Andor, I won't hate it. <laughs> like, because <laughs> like, we know that she's, we know that she's a part of the rebellion and a pilot at that time. So it's just like timeline wise, she would be around that, <laughs> around yeah, that area. Well, so there's a line she says. People. She says the rebellion needs pilots now more than ever. And the first thing I thought of was post Death Star attack when the rebellion has so few fighters leaving that and i was like ah that could be good like intro point for her whatever her next like adventure is maybe after the battle of hoth maybe you're right maybe it's after the maybe it's after the battle of scarif right and she ends up being someone who was like around you know well i guess scarif and and the death star happened pretty close back to back but you know what I mean. I think there's so like all, areas you for her gotta to always got to remind in. me because I, yeah, I was gonna say you always got to remind me because I always forget. Where in the timeline does Rebels fall again? So Rebels takes place, um, five years before A New Hope. Okay, and as like so Ezra is born the same day as Luke and Leia, right? right? And uh, his birthday mm-hmm. is Empire Day, which is the day that, you know, Palpatine's like, oh, uh, reorganize into a galactic empire. So they're like same age. And Ezra, that's very, that's up, very extremely helpful. Right. Actually. Ezra, Ezra ends up getting pulled away from the galaxy, I think, at the age of 17. So two years after that is when a new hope happens. So like Rebels gotcha. ends at like, I think it's two BBY. Got it. So the reason why I asked that question is assuming that Rex 
and Hunter and all the other clones from the era are around the same age, if not the exact same age. Rex is gray in the beard when we see him again in Rebels. So my assumption is that epilogue would have to be before that because Hunter still has black hair. He's just obviously older. Yes, but also like the way that characters age on desert planets in Star Wars seems to be like super fast. True, because Obi Wan so, turns from yeah, 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 you and McGregor to Alec Guinness in eight in eight right. years. <laughs> well, and you know, what, you know what, Matt, you just helped me like come to terms with my next idea. Having like because Omega is friends with Hera in like the, for those couple episodes. What if we pick up with the Ghost Crew? during the original trilogy and Omega replaces like mm. Ezra's hole on like their squad or whatever. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I'm I'll a, be here with that. Cause so like, we get Zed like and Hera and you, Sabine. You, <laughs> yeah. Cause uh, how you were saying, how you were saying with that line of her saying like, Oh, they need pilots more than ever. Now you thought that might've been post Death Star. I took that as just like, oh, like when like pre pre Death Star, like around Andor time, like maybe right after they um they get the plans and uh and everybody that we loved on and that movie dies. Cause like <laughs> I, I kind of took that as like, oh shit, the rebellion has now gone from like just an idea to an actual rebellion. So it's like now they we need to recruit. And I feel like um why the fuck am I blanking on my man's name? Uh and or Cassian. I feel like Cassian's adopted mom and like the speech that she gave in that town, I feel like that was a big kickoff point for like the mm-hmm. rebellion going from being just an idea to an actual thing. And we do know that like between and or the show and Rogue One, we go from like rebellion building to full on rebellion. <laughs> so yeah. like, yep. so I feel like Omega could fit in that timeline. And again, if I'm going based off of Hunter's age versus Rex's age and Rebels, if they're the same age, because we know that the the Kaminoans kept cloning for the yeah. Empire and or the Jedi, so they might not all be the same gestation period for when they were like true and also unintended the bad batch could maybe age slower than the other clones right it's possible because they're faulty yeah Yeah. true yeah also very true but and i feel like that what time so the fact that they kind of left however many years passed between the end and the epilogue and however old Omega is and what timeline she is. I feel like the fact that they left that open-ended is a good sign that she is going to pop back up again because then they don't they don't shackle themselves in the shit. We got to figure out how we yeah. fit her in here because we didn't said which, what year this is. So that's a, that's a hope that, I, again, I, I, I 1000% want her to come back i just don't want it to be like a a, a special guest appearance <laughs> like, like let her actually yeah be no i i totally I don't even hear necess- what you're saying i don't even necessarily need it to be, yeah i don't even necessarily need it to be her show but she should definitely be a part of the cast <laughs> kind of like how ahsoka comes in in rebels and it's not you know it's not yes. her show anymore but she yes. is a very she's a very integral part of the story for a little bit there that would be fine with exactly. me. I'm also exactly. fine if Omega is part of a main cast of a larger cast of characters like that works for me, too. Um, but I don't think we've seen the last of her. Um, we're, we're we're quite. La- I mean, I mean, I knew it was going to be a long one, but uh, we have a finale. Few, series, series, yeah, finale. Few, series finale. a few more things I want to like cover off on um, Hemlock. I just think personally and maybe maybe you'll disagree with this point, but personally, so, so I not, think they, not Rampart. Not Rampart, yeah. Um, <laughs> they had no choice but to kill this man because I think that he was so dark, so menacing that there is no way he wouldn't have continued to rise through the ranks of the Empire to <laughs> to be like, you know, he would eventually have more control than anyone other than maybe Palpatine himself. That's how like conniving and dark I feel like his character mm. was. And Jimmy Simpson did just such a good job of portraying him and being like this just amazing villain. If if 
let me put it this way. If he were to survive the show, it would have been a relentless hunt for the Bad Batch and like the rest of them. So it was there was no choice but to kill off Hemlock. Like that's how good of a villain he turned out to be. And uh, I'm really glad we got that performance. But uh, find another place in Star Wars for not just Jimmy Simpson, but also the guy who voiced uh, Rampart. Phenomenal job. I just want, you know, find them other roles not in Hemlock. Star Wars. Not Hemlock. Yeah. <laughs> they were just... <laughs> they're such great um, voices. You know, like, they, they do such a good job. I don't, yeah. Maybe maybe their next spot is in live action, right? Doubtful for the guy who voiced Rampart I mean, because uh, that'd be great. he did the mocap for Bo Dakuna in um, Jedi Survivor, but... He's no stranger to the Star Wars family, so just bring him back. Another thing that I want to touch on real quick, uh, <laughs> fan favorite clone commando, Scorch, sees his canon demise in this episode. The man got shot like literally five times um, and then falls off the bridge in your favorite scene of the episode. Do you feel any type of way about that? I think as a Republic commando fan, I was just kind of like, wow, d- didn't expect it to happen like this, but uh, it was sad to see him go. Yeah, that... That was um, that was another that that felt weird because I felt like it should have been bigger than what it was. Like that was another. It, it felt yeah. like oh, uh, oh, that was it. <laughs> oh, yeah, like it felt it felt like very like especially like when him when him and uh when him and Hemlock. I'm gonna stop trying to switch them because I'm gonna confuse myself. <laughs> when him and Hemlock, yeah. like when they ran together to like go escape. I thought that it that was about to be like, oh, okay, cool. They're gonna have to get through him to get to Hemlock to save Omega, and then he just kind of got did in. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's that. Okay, <laughs> same thought process. Same thought process. I was like, first off, he's given them trouble before, like in previous episodes. So I was just yes. like, they're gonna have to fight mm-hmm. with him, um, give him his due justice. Like if he had to die, sure, but like I just didn't expect to see him go out like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I guess I'm just, I, like a bitch. I thought I thought better of him. Um, <laughs> and other than that, I mean, you know, we don't typically do this uh, each week. Maybe it'll be something we start implementing into our shows. But like, if you had to give this episode like a rating out of ten, you know, where would you where would you like throw it? Because um, I'll say this: like for a series finale, did a lot of things that I think worked for me but they certainly played it safe um i think that i enjoyed season two's finale more uh but ultimately ultimately when i look back on the show i think i'm gonna i'm gonna 100 percent remember it fondly and and this series finale doesn't exactly like make me think that the show was bad by any means but i think i'm gonna have to go with like a maybe like a 7.5 out of 10 a great episode overall, but not not its best. Not Bad Batch at its finest. That is very agreeable. Uh, so I have two two ratings. So again, for what it ended up being, for what a series finale should be, again, technically, it's fine. <laughs> Name of this episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, so I will so I will say. From my perspective of what Disney, how they wanted to end this show, I'll say, yeah, I'll give it a seven, seven point five. Like it was like it it did what a finale is supposed to do. But because they got there in a way that is traditional for Star Wars, not traditional for the batch. I'd give it a six. I think that's fair. I, th- I think it's there are a lot of really fantastic episodes of Bad Batch. I think we tend to like our our stories a little darker, um, and it's a shame that that a kind little of like more layered. <laughs> yeah, layered as well. I think is a good, a really great word for it. But um, it, it doesn't necessarily bring down the whole vibe of the show itself. But when we look back on things, there are going to be specific episodes that you and I both feel more attached to and would give it a higher yeah. rating um, like as a whole. So uh, I think that's totally fair. It's excited to see where these guys go. I know we're going to, um, you know, Matt, you reached out to me earlier today with a great idea. Like let's cover the series as a whole and, you know, reflect on this after we have it sit for um, a week, I think uh, is going to be good. I know we have, 
Tales of the Empire coming up. We'll be covering that as well. We're going to drag Ray the Ruiner out of retirement <laughs> to cover hey. that. Um, and then uh, Acolyte will be around the corner here, but we have no shortage of content here for you on Annie. Are you okay? This is a good time to remind you. A Star Wars podcast. That we have a sister podcast as well, where Matt and our good friend Travis do all sorts of things anime related. They have a great interview series called The Dragon Call, where they interview voice actors or other uh, anime inspired content creators, cosplayers, all sorts of things. And they recently did a fantastic uh, first, I guess, round, would you say, or first chapter of your uh, D and D playthrough with Caustic Phoenix over on yeah uh, man that uh, was it was it D twenty D twenty show why D20 don't we death match D twenty D twenty death match yes yes so, so uh, we have to call that I out know, we'll put the links in the description yeah absolutely so uh we we live streamed it uh last week on D twenty death matches Twitch channel I know that they're gonna put it on vod in their youtube i'm just not sure when it could be by the time you hear this it might be up if it is we'll put the links in and then uh we will be doing part two next sunday may 5th I w- i'm time stamping this on purpose because when you hear this uh we're, they'll be we'll be live streaming part two again so if you would like to join us for the second part it is uh myself our good buddy Troto Trav and our other producer Dragon Paul GT and uh I will I will I will say I will, I will say humbly that I fucked around and created a new trend that you might see places like, <laughs> outside of that stream. I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> like, like her her chat her chat was bumping with, with my saying that I created in that in that episode, and it was uh, just a can't wait now. can't like, wait to hear it. <laughs> it's, a thing, it's a thing now, but no, we had a ball, so that's that's gonna be great. Uh, that's awesome yes. yeah and you can follow their endeavors uh for dragon ball for life and also d20 deathmatch um we'll, we'll put links in the description like i said but you can follow them at, at db4l underscore pod on instagram and twitter and you can follow us at the letters a and i are you okay pod on instagram and twitter as well uh you know feel free to drop us a review tell your friends tell your grandparents uh I don't know. Tell somebody actually steal someone's phone and play us and then also leave us a review. That would be great. Uh, I enjoyed myself. I hadn't thought this far ahead, (laughs) but of course, Matt, can you um, maybe give them like a t-shirt or like close this thing out for me, bad boy? (laughs) I got you. (laughs) I got you, brother. Um, it could be, dinosaurs but if they're just blah we can cook up some blondes <laughs> it could be you me chickens a midget at a circus it could be Ray. <laughs> life can be a beach but as long as there's no sand you guessed it Annie he's gonna be okay brain I mean be okay <laughs> May the force be with you, man. And with you, later, nerds. Deuces.